New Year, new project. I'm working on a remote controlled cat toy for my two cats. And I wanted to show it briefly before I get into the real subject of this video, which is a review of a uh, RC transmitter for model airplanes and for any other kind of RC vehicle. But uh, just before we get started to motivate this review, I wanted to show the cat toy in its current prototype implementation. It's got two wheels, each with its own motor, two motor speed controllers, and basically it drags around this stick and pulls a toy fish behind it or some other cat toy of the day. And uh, this vehicle is a little unusual because it, first of all, it only has two wheels. It drags its tail and it controls its direction and speed by differenti differentially varying the speeds of these gear motors. And I'll do a video later about uh, the finished version of this toy and how it all turned out and things I learned. But for today, I wanna to talk about the remote control that controls this toy. So let's get it out. So I shopped around on Amazon briefly. Um, I've had a hobby, like a nitro methane RC car in the past. And those usually use the uh, gun style remote controls where there's a trigger and a wheel on the side. But I wanted to get into RC aircraft pretty soon. I've been watching a lot of videos um, of various model aircraft uh, RC projects. So I thought now would be a good time while I'm making this cat toy to invest in an RC transmitter. So I picked up this Radiolink AT10 version two from Amazon. Uh, I think it was about $140. And uh, I wanted to give my thoughts on this radio today because um, I've mixed thoughts on it and ultimately I've decided that I, I'm gonna return it and uh, swap it for a different radio. So today I'm gonna go through what I like, what I don't like, and some thoughts on uh, these radio transmitters in general. So the Radiolink AT102 uh, seems like it's supposed to come in gray or orange, but every version you get is orange right now. I actually think the orange is pretty cool, but I understand it could be polarizing. Uh, the radio is pretty standard size, it's big, uh, standard size for these flight radios. It's got the usual uh, dual sticks. One of them is throttle and doesn't spring back by default, although it includes a kit that lets you customize that. The other one is a uh, elevator and aileron control. And this one has the usual rudder control as well. Uh, at the bottom here, we've got a color LCD. I've left the sticker on. As I said, I was trying out this radio, but ultimately wanted to be able to return it if it didn't work out. And you have some various toggle switches on top. It's got a carrying handle, non-detachable antenna that rotates 90 degrees or vertically like this while you're using the radio. Three potentiometers in the middle, electronic trim controls. And uh, everything is like, the build quality is okay. We've got these two sliders on the side too. These have nice little detents in the, um, in the motion. So I'd say the build quality is okay. Like the, the finish of the plastic is like sort of iffy. You can kind of see that it's uh, painted, I think it's ABS. Uh, there's a few places where the paint is lighter, like in this crack, that's not an illusion. The paint's actually lighter there. Um, the gimbals feel all right, like the throttle's smooth. Um, this one, it's got like kind of a medium weight spring in it. There's a pretty significant flat spot in the center of travel. I didn't know if that was typical for these radios, and I think it is upon trying some other ones, but um, it's all right. And um, it comes with a receiver, which I think is actually really nice. Sticker still on this one. This is the R12 DS. It's got uh, 12 channels and it also has a telemetry module that you can plug in. And this has a wide range of operating voltages. So I immediately got this up and running on the cat toy. It was super easy to set up. And uh, my needs are a little bit weird for the cat toy. It's not just a typical RC radio, uh, like a radio controlled plane. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and what I expect of the radio and um, some of the limitations. So before we do that, I'll mention that this radio comes with a battery holder for eight AA batteries. And unfortunately, this one came from the factory with no spring on one of the negative terminals. There should be a spring here, just like this one. So uh, eight batteries will fit in here, but it doesn't make electrical contact. And I contacted uh, Radiolink and they're super responsive, their support team. Um, and they're sending me a new battery holder, but it hasn't arrived yet. And in the meantime, I've been using just a 7.4 volt uh, lithium battery for a, one of these powering the cat toy, the other one can power this controller. So I'm gonna flip it over. You see the battery bay, it's long and narrow, and unfortunately it's not the right size for a standard 2S battery. Two 18650 cells don't fit in here. So this is already annoying. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in so we can look at the radio with the power on. But 
I would have liked a little bit of a different shape for this battery bay. The manual says that this um, bare header here is polarity protected against reverse voltage. Um, I assume it is, but I, it would have been nice for them to provide a, a standard connector here so that you can just know which way to put it in, not have to worry about it. Uh, I presume that's so that you can prov uh, plug in a wide variety of different uh, power sources in here, and you don't have to have the right connector, but I find it odd. So this battery's not going to fit in here. Um, there is, or let me find, the, there's a little battery door, a plastic door that covers this. I'm not going to be able to put that on, obviously, because it won't fit over the battery, so I'm going to leave it off for now. But uh, just know it doesn't come without a door. It has a little plastic door that clips on here. There's a training port here for connecting this to a computer if you want to fly a flight simulator with it as well. Okay, let's turn it on. So first, uh, flip the switch on, and we get a warning for throttle position. So this is already good. Like, it's a kind of standard feature. We expect if you start the controller with the throttle not at zero, then it should alarm. And that's in case you have your model already turned on. When you turn on the controller, you don't want the model to take off or drive away. So it's nice it has a throttle alarm. Now you can see I've programmed this with my username is Travis, and the model is called Cat Toy. The radio calls it a car type. I don't really know what these defaults do. Uh, it sort of changes the default control scheme, which I then completely customize for this model. So you can manipulate this controller as you move the sticks. You can see, I'll go into this um, servo output view. You can see all the different channels moving. And if you ignore six and seven right now, you'll see one and two. So two is the elevator, one is the aileron. And then we have three, it's throttle, but it's interestingly, it's reversed. I guess that's a uh, convention. And then we have the rudder here. And then I'm actually using channels six and seven to control the motors on the cat toy. And like I said earlier, each motor controls one wheel. The vehicle has two wheels. And so it steers like a tank. It has differential uh, speed control. And that's kind of annoying to map onto just one, like you could drive it by controlling one motor with each hand. Uh, one problem is that the stick is not spring-loaded, so the hands feel different. And the other problem is that that's pretty hard to control precisely. Uh, construction equipment like Bobcats drive like that. You control one track speed with each arm with a lever, but I think for this toy it'd be a little too twitchy. So um, I wanted to map the cat toy to just one stick. So I went, when you push forward on this stick to drive the cat toy forward in a straight line, and as you turn the stick, lean it one way or the other, I want the toy to turn. Similarly, if it's sitting still, I'd like it to turn in a circle to the left. If you push the stick left, turn right, if you push the stick right. And because it's a two-wheel vehicle, it should be capable of making zero-point turns. So to do that, we use a feature of the radio called mixing. I was really pleasantly surprised to find that this is a standard feature of these radios. Basically, we're going to set this up so that channel 6 is the left wheel, channel 7 is the right wheel. When you push the stick forward, the left and right wheels both move forward. So here you can see 6 and 7 moving forward. When you pull the stick left, uh, channel 7 advances, so the right wheel goes forward and channel 6 goes to zero, or to negative speed, if you want the left wheel to reverse. And as you push right, the left wheel accelerates so that the left side of the car goes faster and the right wheel slows down or stops or even reverses. And that way we achieve the steering. And these are additive, so if I push the stick all the way up, both motors go forward. If I then pull it to the right while it's all the way forward, the right wheel slows down. Similarly, the left wheel will slow down to turn left. So this radio supports mixing, and to get there, you, uh, let's go back to the home screen, you hold the mode button. Again, I apologize for this screen protector, but I uh, wanted to leave it on here in case there, were, there was reason to return the radio. So here's the mode screen. Uh, we got just a really basic menu here with uh, various options for the model, and to get to the uh, mixing settings, you actually have to press mode a second time to go to the next screen. Sorry, it's not focused. And there's this thing called programmatic mix. And now I'm going to get to one of the first annoyances I have with this radio. This control scheme is bizarre. Like the fact that there's this little stick here, it's very loose. Um, it works fine, but I think under the hood it's just pressing on four uh, momentary switches because it feels really squishy. And then we have this plastic wheel that you can spin and click to select something. And this thing is really cheap feeling. It's weird that the center spins. You can see that push label spins around. 
I have to say, like, I wasn't expecting super quality from a radio this cheap, but this control scheme is really odd to me. And what I find most annoying about it is that as you're spinning this wheel, the tendency is to hit the stick while you're doing that. So you end up trying to adjust one setting, finger spins around and hits the stick, and then you're on a different setting and still spinning the wheel. So you're adjusting something completely different. And I find that really frustrating. The buttons on the left here to control the mode, like going to a menu and to exit a menu, are fine with me. That doesn't really matter. These are similarly really cheap. You can hear how plasticky. Again, that doesn't really bother me. The main thing that bothers me is this wheel combined with this cursor stick are, is just really odd to me. So that's one of the problems I have with this radio. Um, and let's go into the programmatic mix uh, menu. Again, this is not going to be a, a full review because I'm just focusing on the, the uses for a cat toy. But um, here we can see the normal mixing versus curved mixing. So these are linear mixes where we're going to add uh, several channels together to get the resulting value for a channel. So I've mapped channels one and two, which are the two directions of this, the right stick, to channels aux one and aux two. Those are channels six and seven, like I said earlier. So if I dive into one of these mixes, you can see that uh, the rate for this one is 100%, which means we want uh, moving the stick up and down to affect the output of the left wheel with just fully. So it's like we're controlling the left wheel directly with the up and down motion of this right stick. And the offset is negative 50%. And this offset I found was necessary because of the way this receiver was working. I think something about the PWM of this receiver starts the motor at 50% power instead of at zero. And I actually had trouble getting full motor power from this PWM. Uh, maybe there's a setting I'm missing, but it seemed like it was only using half the range of the PWM. And as a result, uh, I'd have to trim it offset negative 50%, and then uh, the motor would go kind of half speed at full forward and half speed at reverse. So I'm not really sure what was going on there, but when I swapped out the receiver for a different one, like a different radio system, the car drives much better. So that's a little odd, and I'm probably missing something. When you turn this mix on, you can see that uh, the radio nicely it tells you the current deflection of the control, so you can figure out what it should be set to. And to set this offset, one annoying thing about this is you highlight the offset field, then you hold the stick in the position where you want the offset to be. You can't actually roll the wheel to change this value. So you have to hold the stick where you want the offset to be, and then you have to hold down this uh, selection wheel. And it's kind of hard to do with, you have to have two hands, obviously, to do it, and you have to hold the stick really precisely, and this button requires quite a bit of force to push, so it's a little bit fiddly to get the value just right, but you hold it down and it selects that current value as the offset. So, again, it's a little quirky, not too bad. Um, the master for this arrangement, this is master and output. Master is channel two, again, that's up and down on this right stick. Output is channel six, it's just an auxiliary channel that I'm using for the left wheel. So that's, this handles forward and back on the stick for the left wheel. We also have to do that for the right wheel. So I've done that down here. Channel two to aux two, it's exactly the same. The rate is 100% and the offset's negative 50. So this pushing up and down on the stick will control both wheels simultaneously. And now we want to be able to turn. And so if we want to turn left, the right wheel should go faster and the left wheel should slow down. So first let's do the left wheel. We have channel one mapped to aux one. So uh, this is left and right mapped to the left wheel. So as we pull to the left, the left wheel should slow down. And as we push to the right, the left wheel should speed up. And so we have the rate set here to negative 100% on both, and that way, as we pull to the left, which results in a, uh, basically the way the motors are, they're probably wired backwards, but um, just did some experiments to see that pulling left on the stick was causing the left wheel to speed up, and I actually wanted it to slow down. So I set these rates to negative, that just means invert the controller, the control direction of the stick. So uh, that handles the left wheel slowing down when the sticks move left, and similarly, we have channel one mapped to channel seven. This will handle the right wheel speeding up when the stick moves to the left, and the right wheel slowing down when the stick moves to the right. And so here the rate is positive. And one is going to be negative, one's going to be positive, because uh, basically the wheels are, they're wired, one's wired backwards. And so, I don't know, you can kind of just verify this stuff experimentally. Okay, so it has mixing. One odd limitation to me is that there's only four possible 
uh, additive mixes here. And I don't understand this limitation because this is just a, it's clearly running an operating system with a, you know, a little screen driver and stuff like that. And there's no reason you should only have four mixes. And I'm not using more than four for this project, but uh, I find this an odd limitation that they could have added more here, allow you to add more. There's only two curved mixes as well. And these curved mixes allow you to have nonlinear control. So as you move a control, you can say you want the resulting output to be some function of the control. And it's odd that there are only two of those. Uh, maybe there's some limitation on the storage space of this controller or something, but I find that a pretty odd limitation. So there are all sorts of other settings in here that I haven't really gone into. I haven't explored all of them. You can uh, set motor cutoff speeds. You can plug it into a trainer cable for your computer. Uh, you can change the theme from light to dark. Um, so yeah, anyway, it's a pretty good radio. It definitely gets the job done. A another good thing about it is that it has uh, electronic trim. So you can move these. You can move these electronic trim uh, switches to move the trim position. And that means it's easy to find the center. It'll give you a different beep when you find center as opposed to an analog trim where you're just kind of feeling for the center somewhere. So uh, I like the fact that it has this electronic trim. Um, so yeah, that's good. I'd say the, the interface is okay. It's functional. It's kind of bright. Um, it's got a weird uh, serif font, which is kind of surprising, but that's okay. So it's a pretty good radio. The receiver, it's nice that it's bound right out of the box. Nice that it has telemetry. It reports on the voltage of the receiver and stuff like that. But I want to talk about basically the the main problem I have with this radio is that it's uh, is the software that's running on it. Like the hardware is okay. This this wheel is kind of infuriating, but like you know you could work around it. I'd say the big limitation here is this firmware that um, only allows a certain amount of mixing. Um, it doesn't really expose all of the things that you know this radio can do and is doing under the hood to to make its output you know the way you want it. So. Um, I did some more research. I should have done this research before buying something, but um, there's an open source radio operating system called OpenTX, and it allows you a lot more uh, customization, including a lot more mixing channels. That's the main thing I wanted from a radio for weird kinds of robots like this cat toy or future uh, robotics projects. So uh, OpenTX allows you to do more mixing. It allows you to do... Uh, lots of customization, lots of different model types, and it even allows you to, to script it. And since it's open source, you can uh, write your own uh, changes to it. So um, I'm super excited to have an OpenTX radio that I'm going to review in a different video. But uh, for this video, anyway, just my thoughts on this radio are that it's solid, it's inexpensive. I like the fact that it comes with its uh, a transmitter that, or a receiver, sorry, that works with it. You can get smaller receivers. They're pretty cheap, easily available on Amazon here in the States. Um, the battery bay is odd. Again, this two cell battery doesn't fit in it. Um, zoom back out here. And the uh, the hardware is okay. Like it's, oh, it's locking now because we haven't touched it. It feels cheap overall. The gimbals feel all right. Um, the buttons feel pretty bad. And uh, one of these potentiometers is really sticky and the other ones are kind of easy to turn. So uh, it's kind of hit or miss. Like I'd say their support's really good. They're friendly to talk to over email. I haven't talked to them on the phone. Um, and for the price, it's like pretty good. But, you know, you're already spending more than $100 on a radio. And so at this point, when you're spending that much money on a radio, you could spend a little bit more and get a really capable OpenTX radio, which is what I ended up doing and what I wish I had known before uh, starting this project. So um, I've seen a lot of positive reviews of this radio. I think it's pretty good, but not nearly as good as those reviews led me to think. And definitely I would recommend if you're like me and you like programming and you're looking for a flexible radio to sort of do it all, including cars and planes, I would recommend getting something with OpenTX because it'll be way more customizable than something with a proprietary firmware like this radio link. Uh, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching.